What an amazing song. And the band. Yeah. 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 So, our guest speaker today uh, is the Dr. Bob Dean. Uh, Dr. Dean is a professional educational manager for the Centers for Spiritual Living, which means his office is in Evergreen, Colorado. So, it's kind of cold out there, it's a good time to be back here. And we're also blessed to have him present. Uh, Bob has been a senior minister for about 20 years with the Centers for Spiritual Living. He has uh, been a minister in Florida, California, and in Philadelphia, so he's kind of getting around. Uh, something I learned this morning that was interesting is that uh, Asheville, uh, on his part, he's always considered a place of spiritual nurturing. And he visited the center when it was in the cornfields. Yeah. So in, in a terms that I use with my wife, and she gets to it and says, this goes way back. So anyway, <laughs> we are so blessed to have him here. He has a personal vision to know God, live love, and teach the truth. So please welcome the Reverend Dr. Bob Dean. Oh wow, I can't see you. Okay, <laughs> I'll just pretend you're out there. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Bob Dean. I'm very glad to be back here. Um, as he said, Dim uh, Denver. No, I'm not in Denver. I'm in Asheville. Uh, Asheville has been a place to return home to. I'm not from here. But a big part of my spiritual journey began here when I was nine years old and uh, was sitting in the prayer garden out here at Ridgecrest. Uh, some of you may be recovering from that kind of experience as well. And, uh, but I got really clear down in my bones that for life to make any sense for me, I had to understand it, come to grips with it, deal with it from a spiritual standpoint. And um, once I, I figured once I got that part right, then I could go on to some other kind of thing. Well, I'm still working on it, so uh, I haven't gotten there. So it's a real thrill to be back here and be able to be in a position where I can give back a little because I've gotten over the years so much from this time and this place. And before I go any further, let me get my notes. I have a new spiritual teacher, speaking of spiritual growth. She is... Um, perfectly tuned in and intuitively to what's going on around her. She has this connection with spirit that is wide open, no filters. She has a connection with the life within her that is wide open and no filters. So when she is in joy, I mean everybody within 100 miles knows it. And when she is in pain, everyone within 100 miles knows it. And the most wonderful thing about her is she's five years old. Her name is Sophie Rose, and she's my only granddaughter at this point. And uh, she is the most glorious, wonderful, challenging person in my life. And the whole theme of my talk today, she taught me, and I want to share it with you. I don't know about you, but did you get everything you wanted for Christmas yesterday? Do you have anything missing? If it is, make a list, because you just had some treatment to get that filled in. Well, Sophie is this, you know, with all of the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and everyone had a bazillion presents to open. And each one she opened, whether it was the big one from Grandpa or the little one from her brother or the one that showed up from one of her school friends, she would open it and she'd say, Oh my goodness, it's just what I always wanted! <laughs> And with such enthusiasm and such truth that you really had the feeling she meant it about every one of them. Just what she always wanted. And every <laughs> present she got was the best present ever. Any kid ever got anywhere. The hardest part was with all of those presents, keeping her moving so that she uh, didn't stop playing with everything the whole time because that's what she wanted to do. Consequently, her brother's the same way, so the present thing took all day long, which was absolutely wonderful, because it gave me time to eat and, uh, and play and do other things. So it was a good day. But I kept listening to her, and I kept listening for the phoniness in what she said, or the pretense, but it wasn't there. Every one of them. Even a couple of things she wasn't quite sure what they were, and clothes. But she's a little girl. She loved clothes. Everything was perfect and wonderful. It all came out of this, this feeling that, and I thought about 
Is everything I get just what I always wanted? Are all of my presents just what I always wanted? Well, you know what? I don't know about you, but I have yet to have everything I always wanted. Um, I plan to keep working on that. You know, we all have this desiring nature within us because of who and what we are that always wants more. I have heard that was a bad thing. Best news I heard when I walked into this, to, to this, these kinds of rooms, into this teaching, and in the very first time I was in one and heard, the, heard a talk, the minister said, desire is a good thing. I went, I am home, baby. <laughs> you know? Desire is a good thing. Because I came up in a tradition that if you desired it, it was a sin. Didn't matter what it was, but if there was a desire involved, you knew it was wrong. So it was like a, it was a breath of fresh air. It wasn't likely what it really was. Because, see, our desiring nature is because we are infinite beings having limited experience right here. So no matter how much you get, it's not enough because you're infinite. You're forever. You're a great possibility. So don't make yourself wrong because you get bored with your car after you've had it a while and quit smelling new. Or you get tired of this thing or that thing. And you get ready then to receive whatever's next because whatever's next is the next expression of your infinite possibility. And it's rich and it's wonderful and it's powerful. And on some level, Sophie knows that. She gets it. A better present. This is just what I always wanted. So I'm going to share with you this, a secret that's not a secret because you've been talking about it and singing it. You've already ruined my talk completely with all your stuff before. <laughs> but that's a good thing because, you know, repetition and repetition and repetition is a good thing. And I want to talk to you today about what is the greatest gift. Because there is a greatest gift. That everything else falls behind and falls underneath and, falls, and, and supports. And it's the one that's the most obvious and the most simple, and yet we become sometimes the least um, aware of or appreciative of. You would say, well, it's love. Love. It's love. Love is awesome. Love is what makes it all tick and pulls it all together. But that's not the greatest gift. You might say it's joy, it's happiness, it's all these other things that we think of as the greatest gift, but it's not. The greatest gift there is, the greatest gift you have, will ever receive, you have already received, and you are living in the, in the abundance and joy of it right now, is life. Life itself. Thomas Crow reminds out the gifts of the Spirit in his work, and the first one he says is life. Life is our first gift, and out of that flows love, joy, freedom, peace, blah, blah, blah. On it goes. He has about eight or eight or I thought I would remember the order of my talk. But the idea is it starts with life, because without that, you can't experience any of the rest of them. It is the bottom line. It is the one you start with. It's the one that you, as you sang and read, it is the one that always was and always will be and is always here with you. It is the great gift. It is the great gift that you and I have already been given. And everything comes out of it. Love, power, freedom, joy. You know, and, the, and it comes with a, a physical vehicle to carry you through this time-space continuum so that it, that is perfectly suited to you and who you are and what your goals are and what your dreams are and what your plans are. I used to not believe that because I really wanted to be young and cute and small and thin and all those things. And, you know, it's just not the vehicle that served me the way it would have, as I used to imagine. So I'm pretty happy to have the vehicle I do. And you know, the other part, I got into this, te this teaching, I've been in spiritual practice for a long time, through 12 steps. And one of the things I kept hearing in the rooms was, man, I wish I'd had a, a manual for how to do life. I wish somebody had handed me a book that said, this is how you do it. And for many people in the rooms, the various books and materials become the manual for that phase of life, and it's a rich and wonderful thing, and, and, and I'm very grateful for it. But here's the kicker that I didn't know. Life as it is given to us does come with a user manual. It's right present inside, built into all of us. And it's been there all along. Part of what we have to do in, in living, living this life and participating and enjoying it is, is learning where the manual is. You know, with toys now, you used to get, when you got complicated toys, you got user manuals, or you got your computer, you got user manuals. And you don't get user manuals anymore. 
The user manual is in the thing. But you have to know how to go to find it, where to go to find it, right? Well, the user manual for life is alive and well with each of us. Paul says somewhere in the, text, in the textbook that you know, it would be really, really weird if we were given all of this goodness and joy and not told how to use it. It just wouldn't make any sense. It's here in our own deep intuitive knowing and the truth and the wisdom and the, and the knowledge of the ages that exists within each and every one of us. We just have to be able to go find it and willing to go find it. Sometimes it's so much more fun to be distracted. I don't, maybe you don't have that problem, but, um, you know, we've gotten distracted. We come in with, it, with this clarity and this truth, and then we get distracted. We get distracted by the way we're treated as kids. We get distracted by what we're told about ourselves. You're never enough. That was the big thing for me. You're not enough, or you're too much. Too big, too this, too that, too the other. And we... Let all that stuff kind of filter in, and it becomes like a, a, a virus that gets in the way of being able to get clearly to that user manual that we have in us, that will guide us and show us the way and tell us who we are. We get distracted by being confused about where power is. Now, when you're a little guy, a little gal, and, and at various times coming on up, you get, you get told, you get told a lot, that the power is out there. We've got to get the power. The government has the power. Parents have the power. Teachers have the power. Smart people have the power. Those people have the power. For life, for living, for whatever. And once we get that confusion, then we start looking out there for the manual on how I'm supposed to live my life. Maybe Johnny can tell me. Maybe this therapist can tell me. Maybe that therapist can Maybe this healer. Maybe this book. Maybe this thing. I took a break a few years ago, uh, for a whole year without reading a book. <laughs> the first six months were miserable. The last six months were kind of fun. You know? Quit looking out there for the power, because what I began to discover is the power is in here. Hmm. This teaching, this science of mind that we, that I love so much, and that is is what I build my life on and around. Dr. Holmes says in the beginning of the textbook. Since we have all of this, since life is given with this kind of joy and this kind of freedom, why is humanity so miserable? Yeah, it's not his words exactly. He says, so lonely, sick, and afraid. Because we don't know where the manual is, and we've been taught to look for it out there. Truth is, we've forgotten who we are. And humanity is for if humanity could wake up to who we really are, imagine what a world we'd be in. We'd have no reason to think that somebody over there has the power that someone else has, that my God is bigger and better than your God, that my way of life demands that yours has to change and go away and be like mine. We would be in a place where we could honor everyone's individuality and every culture's individuality and allow it simply to be in its highest and best and most joyous. We have forgotten who we are. You could even let your husband be who he is. <laughs> Husbands could quit <laughs> nagging your wives about who they are. I mean, let's get it down here where it belongs, right? <laughs> or our parents or our kids. I don't know about you, but my parents did the best they could, and it wasn't very good. <laughs> they passed on what they had dealt. And some of it was pretty ugly and pretty brutal. But they gave me the most important gift, the most important present, the most valuable present, and for that I shall always be grateful to them. They gave me life. And they gave you life. And all the other stuff is just stuff. You know, I don't know. Any of you been through really difficult times in your life? <laughs> no show of hands, please. Any of you wonder why in the world you have to go through all that? Well, I don't really have the answer to that question. But here's an answer I got a few years ago from a person I was working with, a mentor. And she said to me, 
because I was doing my story. I noticed up in Barbara's office there's a sign that says no whining allowed, so that's a great thing. Or I think it's a $5 charge. Um, but I was whining. Oh, I was doing it really well. I was reciting all of it. And it was all true. I wasn't saying anything that hadn't happened. I was telling my experience, and it was pretty brutal. And it was pretty bad. And I was feeling awful about it and wondering would I ever have a decent life after from that and what was wrong with me and why did they do all this to me in South Korea? And this very wise woman said to me, well, you know what? You're still here. You're still alive. You still have a positive attitude. You still love people. You still have the ability to create a life that you want. So it couldn't have been that bad. Or in spite of the fact that it was that bad, or maybe because it was that bad, but you are more than any of those experiences that happened to you. And it wasn't about who you are. It's simply about the circumstances and who they were and what, whatever you were working out. But the truth is, you are more than all the sum total of your experiences and of all the ones you will ever have in this life. And it's that more that is the gift. <coughs> and it's being able to say, wow, just what I always wanted. I wanted to be alive. I wanted to love. I wanted to have relationships. I wanted to have a career. I wanted to be able to read books and talk about them and have people pay me for it. That's pretty cool. Huh? Yeah. I wanted to get to do the things I most love to do. And all that other stuff has to stop any of that, nor can it. About, about two months ago, walking across the parking lot outside of the office, very carefully because it was a solid sheet of ice and I had on my dress shoes, which I didn't know it was going to be ice, so I was dressed it. And I got really got to my car and I felt hot and doggedy. I made it. I relaxed and my feet went this way and I went that way and broke a rib and made a mess of things. Now I didn't say, wow, this is what I always wanted. You know? No, 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 no. I lay there and tried to get my breath and someone came and helped me get up and I got in the car and I spent about the, the next seven weeks in uh, not able to do much of anything while it healed and my body did its thing. And the end result of that is that I have an appreciation for life like I never had. I got, you know, two months off from work almost. That was pretty cool. I got to lay around and take drugs. Don't recommend that. That part wasn't so good. Getting off of them was no fun. But what happened in that was I have an amazingly deep powerful appreciation for every time I take a deep breath and it doesn't hurt. Wow. An appreciation to be able to lie down and sleep. I had to sleep sitting up because the pain was too much for a while. I discovered I was healed when I fell over off of the pillows one night and it didn't wake me up until the next morning and I had to help help getting up, but it was okay. You know, we need these back and forth. We need these extreme ends of the continuum in order to recognize. We need cold in order to recognize warmth. We need dark to recognize light. We need all of that. And it's not two different things. We don't live in a world of good and bad. We live in a world of a continuum of experience, all of which is good. And I can honestly say I'm grateful for that time. I wish I were not as hard-headed so I could learn these things without having to do it the hard way or choosing to do it the hard way or however that worked. But all of those things are simply grits for the mill, opportunities to discover life, to be able to live it more openly and freely and richly in, in our worlds. Hmm. I discovered that it's okay to let people help me. You might have a challenge with that? Oh, I can do it myself. Okay, I see several hands. Thank you. There's one on, two honest people in the back. Okay, good. I had trouble with that until then. And I discovered, you know what? As much as I like to help people, when I allow them to help me, I'm giving them the gift of helping. Who'd have thought? 
See, because there's a real deep truth in this business of life, and that is giving and receiving is the same thing. You can't have one without the other. If you try to have one without the other, it's no longer giving or receiving. It's something else. It's barter or bargaining or manipulation or any number of other names we want to put on it. But if you let it be in one piece, the giving and the receiving all comes as one. Just like life is one thing. And we experience it in all kinds of ways, greater and greater and greater. Bizarre. Too often, we're like the proverbial fish who swam the seven seas looking for water. You know, it's right here within us. It's always been here. The manual is here. Mine is different from yours, and yours is different from mine, and yet they're all one, and they coordinate, and they work together in some way that is deep and rich and wonderful. So what do we do? We have this life. It's a gift. It's just what we always wanted. It gets clouded and scattered with other things. Hmm. What do we do? We celebrate it. We say yes to it in whatever shape and form it shows up for us. However grumpy or glorious. We say, yes, it's just what I always wanted. Because it is. And it will either be a celebration of the good things that you always wanted or an opportunity to grow into them. Because spiritual growth is nothing more than the expansion of our ability to receive that which has already been given to us. And to get our nose out of the way and our bloated nothingness out of the way, as Emerson puts it, and say yes. You deserve the yes. You deserve all of the yes. Because you're simply, because you're here, you're breathing air, you're taking up space and time, and, and you might as well enjoy it. Because you are wonderful, and so am I, and so is.